And a very good evening. You're watching Primetime News on TV1. For the News First team, I'm Dasani Atada. Let's start off with a look at tonight's headlines. Sri Lankan cricket contingent returns to the island after a record shattering tour of South Africa. Kerala Committee report on Ranjan's list of drug addict MPs presented to the Prime Minister. Eight suspects of the hit and run incident involving a police officer produced in court, seven released on bail. Former Navy Commander Vasanta Karan Nagoda files petition at Supreme Court to prevent arrest. Court orders CID to arrest all other suspects connected to the bond scam. Starting off with some cricket news, a group of players of the Sri Lanka cricket team who recorded a historical win against the Proteas arrived in the island this morning. The Sri Lankan team secured a 2-0 win over the host, South Africa. It is noteworthy that Sri Lanka enters the record books as the first Asian country to win a test series against the Proteas in their own turf. The welcoming ceremony for the team members was conducted at the Special Dignitaries Welcoming Lounge. They were greeted by Minister of Sports, Harin Fernando. We did not win this series. The defeat at the Australian and New Zealand tours mentally challenged us. We played the match as one. We are happy that we won this match. We foresaw that we will be able to be victorious at one point. With that at heart, we trained hard and we emerged victorious. We are truly very happy. Meanwhile, the Sri Lanka Cricket Board also held a media briefing today. After losing three matches, we managed to win one. The talents of all the new faces was one of the main contributing factors towards this victory. This is all teamwork. The United defaced South Africa. The difference between this match and the others was the presence of a strong team spirit. This is the way a match should be played. You should continue to perform in the same manner in the future as well. All members of the team are very talented. We are trying to showcase those talents. We went on a three-month tour. It is not easy to bounce back to normal after losing two matches. More than winning the match, I wanted to focus on bringing back the team spirit, to believe in each other. This is what is important in a team of 11. We all should move towards one goal. If one or two deviate from it, the goal will not be achievable. Now in local news, investigations have revealed that the haul of heroin discovered in Kolpiti yesterday was smuggled into Sri Lanka by a Dubai-based drug smuggler through another drug dealer based in South Asia. Detectives revealed that the Dubai-based drug peddler is at large in the UAE. Investigations conducted till date have determined that organized criminal and drug trafficker Mark andre Madush and his accomplices who are currently in demand custody in Dubai have no involvement in this regard. Operations to seize the haul of narcotics were executed based on a tip-off received from another local drug trafficker. The Police Narcotics Bureau and the STF had apprehended two potential buyers when they arrived at a mall in Kolpiti to purchase the narcotic substances. The haul of heroin was stored in two vehicles and weighed approximately 294 kilograms and 490 grams. The vehicles which were used to transport the narcotic substances are registered under the names of two individuals residing in Panadura. The police has identified that these vehicles were obtained under lease agreements. Police also stated that among the apprehended suspects was a main suspect involved in the incident. The haul of drugs will be handed over to the government analyst department and then produced before the judiciary along with the government analyst report. We have given much thought to this matter as well, especially when such large quantity of narcotic substances are seized. They remain in our custody until the suspects are produced before court. Even the public questions us in this regard. Are these narcotic substances destroyed or sent back to its country of origin? We must maintain transparency. The public has a right to know and we will take steps to ensure we maintain transparency in the future. 
The house of an accomplice of the notorious underworld kingpin Mark Andre Madush, who is currently detained in Dubai, was raided by detectives attached to the Mathur Crimes Division today. The individual is believed to have been used as a marksman by Madush. The raid was part of an investigation carried out over the assassination of the late Loku Hakuruge Shantha, a Hakmana Pradeshia Sabha member of the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna. However, the suspect was not at home during the raid. Police discovered several army fatigues, 21 bullets compatible with a T-56 assault rifle and handcuffs. The suspect has been identified as Samantha Pushpakumara. His 51-year-old father was arrested during the raid. The soldier is believed to have been used as a marksman by notorious underworld kingpin Makandure Madush, who is currently in remand custody in Dubai. Police said they obtained a court order barring the individual from travelling overseas and that the suspect was involved in the theft of a diamond valued at 7,000 million rupees in Pandipitiya. According to the information that has come to light, detectives believe the handcuffs were used for the abduction of the Pandipitiya businessman. The report on the allegations made by State Minister Ranjan Ramanayake's allegation against certain members of Parliament was presented to the Prime Minister today. Ranjan Ramanayake alleged that certain MPs in Parliament consume drugs. The committee appointed by Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe to investigate this matter under the leadership of Minister Lakshman Kiriyalla, comprised of Eran Vikramaratna, Ashu Marasinghe and Nishankar Marasinghe. But the attorney who joined the committee meetings is a lawyer of the United National Party named Mahesh Kalugampitiya. Mahesh Kalugampitiya was also a part of the Pitipana committee appointed by Ranil Vikramasinghe to investigate the bond issue. <laughs> I remember that the UNP appointed a bond commission along with lawyers as well. But that committee said there was no crime and that everyone is innocent. They basically said what the Prime Minister wanted. I can say for sure that even this report will say that everyone is innocent. It will say that Ranjit Ramanayake didn't even say such a thing. This whole thing is orchestrated by the UNP leader and Ranjan is just playing a role. <laughs> Meanwhile, Professor Carlo Fonseca expressed his views on State Minister Ranjan Ramanayake's statement at a discussion held at the National Authority on Tobacco and Alcohol. With regard to my nephew who has been politically misled, he is not afraid of anyone. He isn't even afraid to die. <laughs> <laughs> If he has something that is correct by his conscience, he will say it. All I can say is, dear nephew, please don't have me praise you at a funeral. Because if he continues to act this way, someone will kill him. <laughs> Convening a media briefing at the Sirikota Party headquarters today, Deputy Minister Nalin Bandara responded to the allegations made by State Minister Ranjan Ramanayake, citing there are ministers and MPs who use narcotic substances. Everyone has their imperfections. Even I consume alcohol in some evenings, but I have never smoked. We are not afraid to tell you what we have done and what we haven't. The best way to face this issue is by revealing the truth to the country in a straightforward manner. If not, the entire parliament is criticized by the society. <laughs> We can do it at any time, but I will not just blindly follow the trends. We don't have to panic. If you really want me to, we can go and do a test now. Now this was the response from the opposition to the accusations made by State Minister Ranjan Ramanayake. We are prepared for any test. We do not have to obtain tests in response to an accusation made by an individual. The public knows who we are. The public is well aware of those who represent the opposition. Initially, they said there were 24 members in the cabinet. This accusation has changed and the opposition has now become a part of it. We are well aware that the opposition does not have any drug addicts or those who consume cocaine. During the reign of King Raja Singha, there was a court jester named Andre who played the role of a joker. 
there was another individual named Sattahirala who cleans every corner including the most secretive places. Then there was another called Attemirala. Back in the day, there were no laboratories or x-ray machines to analyze urine samples. So Attemirala's responsibility was to taste the king's stools in the morning and determine whether the king is healthy and fit. If State Minister Ranjan Namanaka cannot solve this issue, I believe that he too must follow Attemirala. I think the parliament lobby is a good place for this activity. Colombo Chief Magistrate Lanka Jayaratna today instructed the Criminal Investigations Department to proceed with legal action if there are any other suspects connected to the Central Bank Treasury bond scam. The Chief Magistrate stressed it is the responsibility of the CID to take legal action against all suspects involved in the bond scam. Beneficial owner of Perpetual Treasuries Limited, Arjun Loishas, and its CEO, Kasun Pali Sena, who are suspects in the case, appeared in court today. Attorney at law, Sajitha Jayawadana, appearing for Loishas and Pali Sena, pointed out legal action was only taken against his clients despite the Presidential Commission of Inquiry into the bond scam and the Auditor General reports highlighting that a group of personnel from the Central Bank were responsible for this issue. He pointed out action was not taken against any other officer disregarding the commission reports. Accordingly, the Colombo Chief Magistrate instructed the CID to proceed with legal action if there are any other suspects connected to the Central Bank Treasury bond scam. The case will be called up again on the 30th of April. While the former governor of the Central Bank, Arjuna Mahendran, has been identified as a chief suspect in this case, he is yet to be apprehended and produced before the judiciary. More bone fragments have been discovered from the site in Udadenia Madagoda in Valasmulla, where the bodies of two businessmen from Rathgama are suspected to have been burnt. Meanwhile, the vehicle suspected to have been used to transport the bodies of the businessmen to where they were burnt was impounded by the Criminal Investigations Department this evening. Earlier, the CID revealed the two businessmen Manjula Asela and Rashin Chintaka were abducted, detained and beaten inside a house in Akmimana and then murdered and thereafter their bodies were burnt inside a forest reserve. On the 22nd, several bone fragments were discovered from the forest reserve and today several more were discovered close to a waterway located close by. According to our correspondent, certain bone fragments are suspected to have been washed away to waterways nearby due to the incessant rains prevalent in the area. Meanwhile, steps are being taken to transfer the remaining police officers of the Special Investigations Unit attached to the office of the Southern Provincial Senior DIG. A senior DIG stated that the Inspector General of Police has been requested in writing to transfer the officers to a police station outside the Mathura district. 25 police officers are attached to this unit, out of which 15 of them were previously transferred to the Western Province by the IGP. Four of the transferred police officers have still not reported to work. Police media spokesperson S. Piruan Kunasekara said that if they fail to report to work, they would be considered to have resigned. The police added that orders have been issued to the respective police stations to record statements from the occupants of the houses belonging to the four officers who had failed to report to work. Chief Inspector Nishanta De Silva from the Southern Province, SIU and Sub-Inspector of the Southern Province, Viraj Madhushankar, are currently in remand custody over the abduction and murder of the two businessmen from Ratkama. The senior DIG of the Southern Province, Ravi Vijay Kunavardhana, was also temporarily transferred to the police headquarters. Meanwhile, family members of the two businessmen met with opposition leader Mahindraj Paksa today. <laughs> No. 
The Colombo Additional Magistrates Court today ordered for seven of the eight suspects were arrested over the hit and run incident in Bamblapitiya, which injured the Borala Police Traffic OIC to be released on bail. However, the driver of the defender, Udesh Ratnaika, involved in the accident was remanded until the 11th of March. In addition, five of the seven suspects who were granted bail were remanded until tomorrow as they failed to adhere with the bail conditions. Among the arrested were a Colombo municipal councillor, the son of former minister Mahindananda Alutgamage and the son of a superintendent of police. When the case was taken up this evening, only lawyers and police officers were permitted to remain in court. Media personnel and all others were requested to remain outside the courtroom. Police media spokesperson SP Ruan Gunasekara said the arrested men are five people who were travelling in the Defender involved in the hit and run and three people who were travelling in a Prado at the same time. The traffic OIC of the Borella police was knocked down by a Defender during the early hours yesterday when he was on his way for an official matter on his motorcycle. He suffered serious injuries and is being treated at the ICU of the Colombo National Hospital. I cannot comment about the incident, but they have escaped after the accident. That is their fault. They were produced before the magistrate's court because of that. Now they have been arrested. The police and the court has enforced the law. If someone has committed something wrong, they have to obey the law. They have to appear before the court. Usually a case like this should be filed at the traffic court, but their case has been filed with the magistrate's court instead of the traffic court. I don't like to speak about that. Uh, a special competition named Iron Man was held in Colombo last morning. He came to perform his duties at the competition uniform and he had entered the road on his motorcycle when the green light was lit. This can be clearly seen from the CCTV footage. The next issue is the fact that the CCTV footage has clearly captured how these two vehicles were driven along the Colombo Library Roundabout and the Liberty Roundabout and also how these drivers ran red lights. So we are conducting investigations on these matters as well. This case was not filed at the traffic court but was filed at a different court because there are allegations of attempted murder. The case was filed at this court because there is an ongoing investigation on that matter as well based on the CCTV footage. <laughs> Sahana Treatment and Welfare Unit built in connection with the Kandy Teaching Hospital at a cost of 628 million was vested with the public today. It was declared open during an event graced by President Maithri Pala Sirisena. This centre was built by the Presidential Task Force on Prevention of Chronic Kidney Disease. The centre can treat up to 150 patients on a daily basis and also consists facilities to carry out blood transfusions, surgeries, tests and also to identify kidney disease at an early stage. Steps are also taken to distribute water filters, blood pressure monitors and glucose monitors to families of patients. What is the National Kidney Fund? This started on the 9th of January when cash flowed in for my campaign so that I could put up posters, banners and cutouts. Then I made a decision that I will not use posters, cutouts and banners for my campaigns and requested the money to be transferred to a particular account in a bank to begin a kidney fund. I personally started this fund. There was 50 or 60 million in it. The state declared it a national fund in the budget of 2015. So all the money spent on this project, none of it was state funds. Meanwhile, the president also carried out an inspection tour of the Gajaba Regiment in Saliapura, Anuradhapura. He also looked into the well-being of injured servicemen while on his visit. A sapling was planted to mark the president's arrival at the camp. Ruan Vijayawardena today assumed duties as the non-cabinet minister of mass media. Ruan Vijayawardena assumed duties at the Ministry of Mass Media following religious observances. Several dignitaries including Minister Ravi Karuna Nayaka, Ajit P. Pereira and the Mayor of Colombo, Rosi Sena Nayaka were also present at the event. <laughs> In 2015, when our government won the election, a year of free media dawned. I intend on protecting this media freedom. Media runs in my blood. That's why I strongly believe that I will serve well as the Minister of Media. Anyone has the freedom to condemn the government. Previously, such a situation did not prevail. 
There were many problems like the white van menace. Few journalists were even abducted. There is no problem like that now. We have given the freedom to everyone where they can say anything against this government. <laughs> The 40th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council began today in Geneva, Switzerland, with Sri Lanka on the agenda. High-level discussions will be held on various human rights-related issues till the 22nd of March this year. During the first three days of the session, senior officials from more than 90 states and international as well as regional organizations will highlight human rights issues of national and international interest and concern. According to the reports, the Council will review over 120 reports on a wide range of issues presented by more than 25 human rights experts, groups and mechanisms. Excellencies, let us be clear. The human rights agenda is losing ground in many parts of the globe, but I am not losing hope. Yes, we see troubling trends, but we also see powerful movements for human rights and social justice. Youth, indigenous people, migrants and refugees are demanding their rights and making their voices heard. Journalists are fearlessly getting their stories out. I do not accept a world that tells my granddaughters that economic equality can wait for their granddaughters' granddaughters. I know you agree. Our world cannot wait. And we must not tolerate the outrageous near impunity for crimes against journalists and other media workers. Respect for human rights is just a game of words if there is no respect for people. Meanwhile, we contacted the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and inquired on how the government of Sri Lanka are expecting to act on the resolutions being presented at the 40th session of the UNHRC. A senior official at the ministry said that a proposal on Sri Lanka will be presented on the 20th of March. He added that the members of the delegation representing Sri Lanka at the sessions has not yet been finalized. He added that a decision will be taken in the future as to if a special team of representatives will be sent from Sri Lanka for the summit or if the island will only be be represented by the permanent representative of Sri Lanka to the UN in Geneva. The case filed against MP Vimal Viravansa and six others for causing public nuisance when the then General Secretary of the United Nations Human Rights Council visited Sri Lanka was taken up for hearing today. Colombo Chief Magistrate Lanka Jairatna ordered for the hearing of evidence to be held on the 13th of May. The magistrate ordered the witness to appear before court on the said date. The Sneman Garden Police produced in court a CD containing the footage of the protest that caused public disturbance on the 6th of February 2016. Former Navy Commander Admiral Vasanta Karan Nagoda today filed a fundamental rights petition with the Supreme Court seeking an interim injunction order preventing his arrest. In the petition, he claims as part of the CID investigations, there is an attempt to arrest him. The petition adds an investigation is taking place on the petitioner based on the statements provided by Lieutenant Commander Chamin de and former Navy Commander Travis Sinaya on the investigations currently underway over the abduction and forced disappearance of 11 youth from Colombo in 2008. The Inspector General of Police, the Attorney General and Director of the Criminal Investigations Department, among others, have been cited as respondents. Views were expressed about the committee report on the brawls that took place in Parliament during a media briefing convened by the Pivituru Hello Rumea. It is very evident that this report is a biased report. The report accuses 54 members from the Alliance, 4 members from the UNP and 1 member of the JVP. An overwhelming majority of MPs have been accused of walking into the well of the chamber. If parliamentarian Vijita Herat was sent back, this conflict would have never occurred. The route to this conflict is the Speaker trying to pass a no-confidence motion that was against standing orders. If the brawl in Parliament is the pain, the cause of the pain is Karu Jayasurya. The Speaker is responsible for the security of MPs inside the chamber, not the police. If the Speaker makes a statement like, I don't care if MPs are bringing pistols inside this chamber, or I can't do anything if someone is killed inside the chamber, then MPs have to bring their own protection. We would like to inform the committee, parliament and the speaker that we refuse to accept this party biased report.
आर्थिक कैरम खंडा है मर Is your team the 2018 Best International Sports Team? Sports First, Allianz Platinum Awards 2018. And that's a wrap of Prime Time News for tonight. For the News First Team, I'm Dasni Athalde. Good night.